This is Howard Altman, Senior Managing Editor of Military Times. I'm here with Alexander Daniluk, who is in Ukraine right now. How are you doing today? We are great. You know, we're fighting for our fatherland and we're winning. What are you observing? I observe, you know, that uh, Ukrainian people, men and women, who are stopping, you know, Russian tanks and uh, BTRs and BMPs, you know, shooting Russian helicopters, missiles, and, uh, you know, taking prisoners. Uh, yeah, and I can see that so-called Russian military who are trying to destroy our cities by they, you know, artillery, trying to surround our cities, we're trying to make our people starving. And actually, I'm not quite sure, you know, how Nazi behave themselves in this, uh, you know, fields and forests 80 years ago, but it seems to be very similar or even maybe worse. So tell me, are you familiar with what President Zelensky said about foreign fighters starting to come to Ukraine to help? I heard that actually we had like more than three uh, three dozen thousands, you know, applications uh, just, you know, two days ago. Uh, I don't know if anybody is in Ukraine right now, honestly, uh, but I know that a lot of guys, a lot of volunteers from Japan, for instance, which is actually a very neutral country since the Second World War, they're coming to join Ukrainian people in their fight for freedom and in their fight against this global evil, which is Russian Federation. Now, do you, are, you, are you concerned that Russia, which has a very large military, is going to step up their activities and increase the uh, amount of troops and the amount of missiles and uh, aircraft attacks on Ukraine, Ukraine cities? I think that actually in the sense of human power, it's highly unlikely because they actually concentrated almost everything they could use against Ukraine. Uh, of course, they have some reserves if they would start using conscripts, but even professional soldiers, young guys like 20, 21 years old, they are completely useless. It's rather a liability than a real, you know, striking force. So I think that uh, actually it's completely clear that putting conducted suicide by attack on Ukraine. And you know that that was my, uh, you know, forecast for uh, that alleged, you know, invasion into Ukraine. And actually, if he would decide to send conscripts to Ukraine, it would be just additional uh, reason for Russian people to overthrow this bloody dictator sooner. Uh, so no, I don't think that it's, it's, it is an option. And I don't think that this is a threat. I agree that actually what is a huge problem for us right now is Russian missiles. And despite Russia already used a uh, significant uh, part of uh, the existing missile capabilities on Ukraine, uh, uh, it's like hundreds of calibers and Iskanders already. And you understand that actually this level of uh, uh, this level of use of that missiles is usually not for attacks on neighboring countries, but for confrontation with NATO, right? So actually, right now, Ukraine is not just shield of Europe, but shield of NATO as well. And that's why, yeah, they can continue that. But I don't know for how long they can continue that, because uh, even despite they have a big stock of missiles, uh, it's pretty expensive and we know numbers, right? I mean that maybe one, two weeks of the same, you know, intensity and Russia will have no, no missiles at all. What would Ukraine like from the U.S. and its allies right now? We would like to see some balls, you know, actually. We would like to see some balls. We would like to see you, uh, you know, being ready to fight along us because this is not just our fight. And that bullshit about, you know, nuclear threat, uh, it's completely clear that Putin is mad. And it's completely clear that Putin is mad, uh, at least, you know, since 2014 when he annexed Crimea. And actually, it, it means that he can and he will use nukes if we don't stop him, right? And we have to stop him altogether. 
And actually, Ukrainians will definitely do it, you know. And right now, the additional support, uh, no fly zone in Ukraine, you know, uh, uh, anti, you know, uh, uh, missile protection. This is what we need. And actually, do something, you know, be serious uh, because all of that, you know, killed Ukrainian kids. This is, of course, they are victims of. Uh, Putin and his, you know, Nazi policy, but uh, the lack of balls is also a part of the reasons, you know. And um, do you think U.S. troops should be on the ground in Ukraine? The Defense Secretary and the President have both said that is not going to happen. So I think that right now what we can do and what we should do, we have to change the rules for Security Council, UN Security Council, and it should be completely clear that if the country is an aggressor and if the country uh, is conducting, you know, war crimes and, uh, and killing, you know, kids and civilians and conducting genocide, this country doesn't have any veto right. And it means that actually it could be just in two days then we would have, you know, that mandate for UN peacekeeping, you know, mission in Ukraine. And we can actually send that mission, you know, uh, to Ukraine immediately. And it's just a matter who would love to join that mission, right? So it's completely clear that it, it is possible. And again, it's not US forces. It's not, you know, NATO forces. This is UN forces, like in Korea. And it is, it is possible to do. But it, it, it requires, you know, some bulls, some bulls. Sasha, thank you so very much. Stay safe and stay in touch. I'll be talking to you. Hope we see you. Thank you, my friend. Thank you, Howard.